Today we're going to talk about species pyramids to show biomass energy in numbers within food webs. Two questions you should think about while watching today. Which species pyramids are always in a pyramid shape, meaning they will always be in a triangular shape? And two, how can species pyramids show species interaction and nutrient flow? We're going to start with a real simple um, simulator that's on the internet. I've got the link below on the video here. The first thing I want you to do when you look at this is obviously read through the instructions and then note that if you want more information while you put these together, you can look at this field guide down here, which simply tells a little bit about each ecosystem. Uh, I've gone through this one quick as an example, so I'm just going to put this together very quickly um, and you can see how it's well organized. You just drag the blue dot, so phytoplankton are a producer, squid and herbivorous fish are first order heterotrophs or first order consumers and then penguins seals and carnivorous fish are secondary consumers and then killer whales are, are tertiary consumers now this is a real uh, common example you can see it's got this pyramid shape and then when you're all done to, to see if you're correct or not you can hit check um, that shows me i'm correct because nothing went back over here the other very good thing about this simulator is it shows us the basic flow of energy where the sun is flowing down to the producers and then the energy flows up. If you want to see specifically about the energy flow, you can click on the pyramid of energy and it gives you some numbers here, which we'll come back to later. Or you can look at the actual numbers of individuals that are being shown here. So you can see there's the most phytoplankton and as we go up, there's less and less and less actual species in each tropic level. So let's go back to our notes here and we'll take a little bit of a breakdown of these and then show you a few exceptions to the rule. So first read through these definitions quickly with me. Uh, biomass is talking about the biological material in a population. Energy is the energy held by that biomass. And then the numbers are the actual numbers of organisms at each tropic level, as you just saw in this example here. Now, I want to show a few exceptions to the rule as we go through these notes here today. So the first system, let's just talk about a real basic system. Let's say we have a simple food chain with uh, a tree at the bottom of the food chain, and the energy flows into maybe some insect that eats that tree, some herbivorous insect, and then let's say there's a bird that is eating that insect. So notice the arrow shows the flow of energy. Now if we showed the biomass in this example, uh, we could assume that the tree has a large biomass and it's going to have the biggest base on this pyramid. Insects, obviously, if you added up their total biological material, they're going to be less than the tree, and the same thing for the birds. If you take the birds living in that tree, their biomass should be less than the overall insects. Now with the energy, I'm gonna draw this a little bit more specifically because there's a special way we should talk about the energy flow. So for the tree, it's obviously gonna have the most amount of energy. The insects are going to have a significantly less amount of energy and the bird should have significantly least amount of energy. And we'll talk about why there's that real important change that way. And then finally, the, the numbers in this example are one, the exception here. So here's one exception that I want you to pay attention to. So if we have a single tree or maybe two trees or something, you could have potentially hundreds of insects living in that tree and you could potentially have 10 or 20 birds living in a tree. If you've gone out and you've seen a tree, you never have just one tree with one insect and one bird. So you can see our pyramid shape is no longer like the pyramids in these other examples. A second example I'd like to show is, and uh, let's just put our titles in here again. We have biomass, we have energy, and we have numbers. So in a second example, let's talk about another food chain. Um, and let's say we're maybe in an aquatic ecosystem. And let's just do a real basic one. And also let's say seasonally, it's winter time. 
Um, hopefully everyone has an understanding of what that means. On the bottom level, we might have phytoplankton. And the energy flows to something that eats them, often called zooplankton. And we might have some kind of fish that is eating the zooplankton and possibly the phytoplankton. So in terms of simple biomass, we can have some seasonal differences here. Now, if it is the, in the wintertime or possibly a time where the plants aren't gonna grow as much, there's a chance that you could have less biomass. You could have more zooplankton that have stored the biomass from the phytoplankton. And then you could have fish on top of that that are storing the the energy or the biomass from the zooplankton. So again, you see this is not a perfect pyramid shape. In terms of energy though, just like before, energy always needs to show this fairly typical looking pyramid like this, where you're going to have the most energy in the bottom level, a little bit less energy going up and then the least amount of energy on top. And then in terms of numbers, you could have um, quite a few fish, but you might have a lot more zooplankton because they're a very small species. And then just based on the seasonality, you might have less or very little phytoplankton because a lot of them have died off because of seasonal exceptions. So you can see here in both of these examples, we have uh, a couple of exceptions compared to what we saw in the simulator. The one that we need to focus on though is that here we always have our pyramid shape. And we'll talk about why as we go down here. So in this case, under energy, we're always going to have that pyramid shape. So let's take a look at a quick example. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. And in this example, I want us to calculate energy. Let's just do a, a real simple calculation from, let's say, the producers up to the primary consumers. So in this case, we want to find out, well, how much energy is going up to this level and how much energy is being lost so as we calculate the energy that's lost or passed on at each level, we need to do a real simple calculation. So we can take the actual energy that makes it through to the next level. So we can take our initial amount of 784 minus 8,006 divided by our initial amount of energy, which is 8,006. And again, then just give it a real basic, uh, a real basic unit on there. So if we take 784 minus 8,006 divided by 8,006, you'll notice we get a negative value of 0.9, or if we want to do our percentage, multiply it by 100. So that gives us approximately 90.2%. So in here we have a negative 90.2%. Now again, that's the amount of energy lost at that level when it's being passed up. And remember, according to the laws of thermodynamics, we can never have more energy at the level above it. So we lose 90% of the energy, and this is approximate. We lose about 90% on each level that we go up which means approximately 10% of the energy is passed on to the next level, and that is the same. So that pattern follows itself all the way up this pyramid where approximately 90% is being lost at each stage or each tropic level, so as we go from one tropic level to the next, and about 10% of the energy is being passed on, and that's the same for this top tropic level. Again, if you want to check this out or try it out some more, you can see the link here or it's going to be posted at the bottom of the video. I hope you learned something new today.